The reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 10, and it's to be found on page 1077 in the Church Bible. John chapter 10, starting at verse 22. The unbelief of the Jews. Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered round him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you don't believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. And my Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the word of God. Amen. Uh, be bold and courageous, Vicky, is what God's telling me right now. Because I think, um, listen to everything that's been going on, I've just been like, oh gosh, how can I follow through with that, uh, with the talk? But um, I think there are some things that I'm going to say in my um, talk that probably um, um, resonates with some of what's happened um, we're just going to forget about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm short, so I can get down. Anyway, um, so on praying on what um, Anne lovely read out, um, God wanted to talk to me about a couple of things. And the first thing was that I... Yeah, can you... Thank you. Um, the first thing that I knew that God wanted me to talk about is that last bit, and it said, um, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And it just reminded me that God is never going to let us go in any situation. And as a church, God is never going to let us go. I'm just, I'm like, go, thank you. That's better. <laughs> thank you. That's perfect. Cheers. Yeah, it reminded me that God is never going to let us go. Even if we are go far away from him, even if he is so close, he's never going to let us go. And once we've accepted him in our hearts and in our minds, he's always there. Obviously, some of you know, uh, most of you know, I work within Azalea. And I work with a lot of women. At the moment, I'm working with 86 women. And uh, some of these women, I find it very, very hard to work with. Because of their personalities, they grate on me. Um, they say to me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up drugs today. And I'm like, yes, brilliant. They're, yes, yes, yes. And then tomorrow, they're like, sort of went out and had drugs last night and you're like oh, oh. and it gets so frustrating at some points but with the grace of God I say okay let's start again but there are some of the women that I find it really easy to gain a relationship with and there may be some people that you work with or um, family members or something they're great on you as well and, and it's hard to work alongside them for some people this sometimes is how our relationship is that goes with God some people find it easy and natural to have a personal relationship with him. They can look around and see the amazing things that are around them, how good life is, how well everything is going for them. It's easy for them to believe in a God who loves them. However, there are some people that do fall victim of everything in life they, that can throw at them. People they love and fall ill and pass away, friends move away, family members fall out, ill, just their life, they just feel like everything is at them. And a couple of years ago, I felt like that. In the year 2013, at the start of the year, I was planning on going on a DTS in January 2013, and I was ready for it, and the church were like, yes, Vicky can do it. And then suddenly, 
my mum had cancer. And you all know how close me and my mum are. I was like, oh, I'm not leaving my mum. No way. So that was the first thing. The second thing was um, I realised towards the end of the year that I was, in, I was in a verbally abusive relationship with someone who is the most unhelpful person in the entire world. And I wouldn't believe it to anybody. People were saying to me, Vicky, da, 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 and I just was not believing it. And I was believing the lies that this person was saying to me. No one's going to love you. No one's going to take care of you. I'm the only person that's going to do that. Your church are turning you against me because of da, 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 da. And I was believing it, and I was believing it. And then the third thing was that my grandma passed away. And again, me, my mum and my grandma, we were a really close-knit group. And losing my grandma was like losing my left arm. And it was just horrific. So that year, I just felt like everything was being thrown at me. But on the 1st of January 2014, I applied for a DTS. And then that year, I went and did a DTS. And I got to go to Thailand and Cambodia and Laos and... Myanmar and loads of other places. So I believe that we go through a struggle, but there is always something good that turns around. I had to go through a year of battle, battling through the good and the bad, battling through the lies that I was believing, battling, battling, battling. And then there was glory. There was the light at the end of the tunnel. But do you know, I thought God was so far over here, but actually he was right there at all times. He was talking to me. I might have was, I was, admit I was ignoring him, but he was right there talking to me. And I can look back now and realize, oh, yeah, God put that person in my life and said this. God said that. And you realize that back then, you think, oh, that's why it did that. Yeah. In my personal life, there were some times that I didn't feel God loved me 110%. All my Christian friends and non-Christian friends were off getting married and having babies and buying houses, and there was me working at Arriva. Oh, you all know how much I loved working at Arriva. For some of us, we have always had a faith. You've had the support of a Christian family who will automatically find it easy to establish their own personal relationship with God. For others, a strong Christian background can sometimes what hinder the relationship from God. Some people's experiences of their father can also be bad and sad and upsetting. And some of you know my relationship with my father isn't the best, but that is turning around a corner because I'm starting to write a letter. The first draft was the most horrendous letter in the whole entire world, and someone had to sort of go, let's start again, Vicky, let's rip this up and start again. But again, that's can sometimes can affect the attitude towards our Heavenly Father. And indeed, our relationship with Him has to break through this. And I, and personally, I'm still breaking through that. And that is a lovely song, the, the Father song. I absolutely love that because I don't resonate that with my Father. I resonate that with my Heavenly Father. And I can say, yes, it's who I am, it's who I am. And I'm loved by Him because I know that God loves me. Whilst others will be drawn to this loving father if their own human one is not around or is not present. But I want, to, I want to encourage you to put aside those feelings and experiences if you haven't had a, an amazing relationship with your father or with a parent. I want you to try and put those experiences and feelings aside and let the deep relationship that God wants with you to happen. And I think, again, it's that ripping open ripping opening the zip of the heart and letting God in and minister into your heart as well. I want to let you know that no matter how the other relationships in the life are going, it's always possible to have a fantastic relationship with God and also that it can be a personal one as well. Because of Jesus, that you can approach God on a personal level and be welcomed and loved in a way that is always accepting as nothing else they will have ever or will ever experience. Having that experience of being near God, and we all felt that just a minute ago when we were in that worship. Each and every one of us felt the Spirit of God. Some of us more, some of us less, but we, we f just we followed 
where the Spirit wanted to take us. And I was sitting next to Hannah to me, and I was like, it's half past 11. I've never started to talk at half past 11. But I thought, it didn't matter about time, because we're just spending it in God. And even if Glyn and Andrew came up to me and said, actually, Vicky, we want you to do a talk another time. We just want to follow the Spirit, and that's how it's meant to be. We've just got to be led by the Spirit. I want to also make sure that you know that when it comes to a relationship with God, it gets personal. And I mean it gets personal because he's the only one that knows what's going on. I was so oblivious to some things, but God clearly knew what was going on. And someone said to me a couple of weeks ago, I visited the church, and someone said that... Um, and some of you might agree with this or disagree with it, but someone mentioned to me, um, when you become a Christian, people say to you, become a Christian, life will be easy, it'll be lovely, full of roses and everything. When we become a Christian, it gets tough, it gets hard, because we've actually got to face things. It's not like, a, oh, I don't have to deal with that, we'll just, sh-, you know, yeah, most of us do just shove it away. But it comes back to bite us on the bum. It does if we don't deal with things. But it is, it, we have to get into a personal relationship with God because he is the one that knows all things. In my work, I go to the streets of Luton day and night and explain how to demonstrate that God wants to have a very personal relationship with us. He doesn't want to control us, but he wants to be a part of everything that we do. The decision is ours as to whether we let him or not. And when I talk like this, or when I do a Zayla, I always say a disclaimer. I'm talking to myself about this as well. I have not got this down to a T. I talk, I, the way, I, when I was writing this, I was thinking, yeah, Vicky, you need to know this. Gosh, well, you're teaching everyone else it, and you're not doing it yourself. So I am absolutely te- talking to myself in this as well. God is many things to us but there are many things that we may not consider that God is, which will help us understand better why he's so keen to have a relationship with us. I'm going to quickly go through, because it is time, but, also, but you ha- I have got them in my notes that will get them sent out on email, and I have got some paper copies, so I'm just going to run through them really quickly. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to go through a few Bible verses and discuss how these about what these are about God showing that he wants to have a personal relationship with us. So in Psalm 5, 1 to 3, um, it says, Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay, pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For I pay, pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. That is talking about our personal God. We can say that that is your personal God. It's my God. He's our guide in Psalm 5, 8. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. He will guide us in the right way. He is our shelter in 5, 11. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name will be filled with joy. He is our shield and our protector in Psalm 5.12 as well. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteousness. You surround them with your favor as a with a shield. He is our deliverer. He wants good things for us in Psalm 71.4. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked from the grass of those who are evil and cruel. He's worthy of our praise, again in Psalm 71, 14 to 17. As for me, I shall always have hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell you of righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long, that I know not how to rel- relate, relate them all. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts. Sovereign Lord, I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvellous deeds. He is always with us in Psalm 139, 7 to 12. 
Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise in the wings of the dawn, you are there. If I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. Night will shine like day, for darkness is as light as you. And he is our creator. And again in Psalm 139, 13. For you created my inmost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. God chooses us because he thinks that we are worthwhile. He made us in his perfect image. Even though we are sinful and so are not perfect anymore, he still wants us for who we are. However, it is up to us to decide if we want him or not. God doesn't force us into a relationship with him, but he will always be for, there for us. And when we do decide we want to accept God or carry on letting him in for who he is, it's like he accepts us for who we are. The last six weeks, um, that my anxiety levels have shot really high at all times and I had to go to the doctors about it um, but I knew God was around me and I knew that he was close but I kept feeling like um, you know when on a TV you haven't got the aerial properly done and it's those static black and white lines so you can sort of see the picture and you can hear the, hear the voice but no one really wants to watch it because you can't see it but I felt a bit like that God was on the other side of the, like the TV screen all this is static um, um, so I could hear God but I couldn't see him he was at this distant place and I realised that there were loads of things that were getting in the way of my relationship with God I had to strip back I had to stop working for a couple of days I had to stop doing things for my friends I had to turn my work phone off try to stay off Facebook as much as I could had to really strip back on what was getting in the way of me and my relationship with God and then building it back up again and realising is this helpful or not are these things in my life helpful or not speaking to my friends as well about how I was really feeling about the loss of the one of the women that I lost a couple of weeks ago facing up to the fact that she had died and I think I was putting on this big front of I'm okay, I'm Vicky, I work for Azalea yes and actually underneath I was a crying little girl because I lost a precious precious woman for the, all the wrong reasons and I felt like I had let her down I would felt like I'd let all the other women down but actually she wanted to go home she knew God she knew Jesus so much she just wanted to go home and she said uh, she died on the Sunday and on Wednesday that I saw it she just said I just want to be with God I just want to be without pain I just want to be with God and then within 24 hours she, um, she commits suicide um, so but it was that whole of it's my fault oh my gosh what did I do wrong type of thing um and having them being accountable to me as well. And I said to them, look, I need you to be accountable for me. If I say something that you think that, like, hold on a minute, Vicky, I need you to say to me, hold on a minute, Vicky, you need to rethink that. And I'd also f forgotten about the truths in my life. So at 2 a.m. one morning, when I couldn't sleep, I started writing post-it notes. And if uh, you could put the picture on the screen for me, lovely. This is my mirror in my bedroom. You've all been to my bedroom. Welcome. Um, so at 2 a.m. one morning, I started writing truths on my mirror. And just a few of the post-it notes, they say, the best is yet to come. Keep God as your first love. Trust God on a daily basis. I'm a child of God. I am loved. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Nothing is bigger than God. God does not reject his children god has everything in hand i don't have to worry and this is a really hard one and i had to write it 
you are beautiful because I don't believe that and I will admit that in front of you all now I don't think I am at all but 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 I believe that God thinks I am so I have to believe that God thinks I am and to the, and then I will get to the point that I'll go yes I am beautiful but right now I won't say that <laughs> maybe some of those words resonate in you and that you may come to the front of your mind some words that you need to declare out and write on post-it notes or write in your journal or something like that and I really do encourage you to do it he is our personal God and our guide he is our shield and our shelter he is our deliverer because he wants good things for us he is always with us and he is our awesome creator start knowing these truths and God will be next to you like he always is. Having a personal and honest relationship with God is so powerful and is so liberating. He wants to be involved in every aspect of our lives, the good and the bad. So I'm just going to pray to end. Dear Lord, thank you that we know you and you know us. We pray that we can get into a deeper personal relationship with you. We pray that on a daily basis we turn to you in our hour of need. And when these things go right, that we turn to you and rejoice. We want so much more of you in our lives. We are hungry to know more of you. Guide us, minister to us. In Jesus' name, amen.